I am so grateful to be up here <laughs> to receive this award so I cannot thank my family <laughs> and my team and instead talk about something that's really important to me. I'd like to bring to light an aspect of our industry that has risen to the surface in the last week. <sighs> it's an issue that's been bubbling since like really the whole time, but this issue has a solution that each one of us in this room can participate in. So earlier this week, USC Annenberg's Inclusive Initiative released findings that 67% of the top critics reviewing the 100 highest grossing movies in 2017 were white males. Less than a quarter were white women and less than 10% were unrepresented men. Only 2.5% of those top critics were women of color. So you're probably thinking right now, like, wow, that super doesn't represent the country that I live in, and that's because that's true. This is a huge disconnect from the US population breakdown of 30% white men, 30% white women, 20% men of color, and 20% women of color. So why does that matter? Why am I up here giving you statistics when I could be spending this time talking about my publicist? Um, Lindsay, who I love, and thank you so much for bringing Jesse up here and making me super emotional while I rattle off percentages of people. On top of all of this, am I saying that I hate white dudes? No, I'm not. But what I am saying is, is that if you make a movie that is a love letter to women of color, there is an insanely low chance a woman of color will have the chance to see your movie and review your movie. And this is also not to mention other people besides white dudes like Star Wars and would love the opportunity to do a set visit. And I'm also saying I don't hate white dudes. I'm just saying we need to be conscious of our bias and do our part to make sure that everyone is in the room. So what would it take for the critic pool to match this 30-30-20-20 real world breakdown and how can we get there? Well, here I am. It's easier than you might think. The bottom line is, is that if each of the top 100 films in a year added nine critics that are three underrepresented males, three white females, three underrepresented females, and the, the average critic pool would match the US population in just five years. Super simple. It really sucks that reviews matter, but reviews matter. Good reviews out of festivals give small independent films a fighting chance to be bought and seen. Good reviews help films gross money. Good reviews slingshot films into awards contenders. A good review can change your life. It changed mine. Our industry has gone through a major growth. Thank you for clapping for my good reviews. I love that. <laughs> It's like so excited to be like, yeah, that one time. <laughs> Our industry has gone through a major growth. We are expanding to make films that better reflect the people that buy movie tickets. But they are not allowed enough chances to read public discourse on these films by the people that these films were made for. I do not need a 40-year-old white dude to tell me what didn't work for him about A Wrinkle in Time. It wasn't made for him. I want to know what that film meant to women of color, to biracial women, to teen women of color, to teens that are biracial. And for the third time, I don't hate white dudes. These are just facts. These are not my feelings. And I'm really sorry, Lindsay. Please don't kill me. <sighs> As some of you know, I immediately jumped on to Frances's brilliant words, inclusion writer. And this was way before she had bumper stickers for her iPad. Because I know that this means that my work will be shown, digested, discussed by a variety of people, not just a singular perspective. I want to know what my work means to the world, not a narrow view. Thanks, Mom. 